In January of 1970, I went into U.S. Air Force. Oh, wait a second, I missed something here. Oh, in January of 1970, I went into the U.S. Air Force at 19 years old after a year and a half of college, Bronx Community. I operated the switchboard when we took over the school, when we took over, in other words, we, we, we took over Bronx Community College. That was my first inclination with, uh, say, civic communication, because I, I would operate the switchboard. That, you know, they, they would call, people would be calling what's happening at the college. And the instructions that I gave to people was like, this is Bronx Community College. This school has been liberated. You cannot speak to anyone. Anyway, so that, that, and so I was I was with a small group of um, what happened was I was with a very small group of uh, three three women three three men three boys three girls we were all young like nineteen or whatever it is listen at eighteen seventeen eighteen eighteen years old and we we sort of studied like like Nkrumah you know the Che um, the F um, Fanon all these like leaders that that and we were like the brain trust to the larger organization at Bronx Community College which was Simba when we took over it was to get black studies black uh, black teachers or whatever into the college that was our, our, our goal anyway um, uh, let's see in the Air Force my eyes were really open to racism and its effects now this is interesting because I grew up in the South Bronx. But in, in, in Patterson Price, was, we, we were different than every place else because our, our existences in, in the Patterson Price, at least mine, was totally integrated. My next door neighbors were white, next to them were, were, were Puerto Rican. I, we were just totally, and we were all just poor. We met the Jewish people up in the concourse and we went to school. So it was, uh, it was different than, say, if you was in Harlem, it was all black, or you was someplace else, it was all white. So we had a sort of really different perspective, even, even when they had busing, right? Well, uh, for several reasons, anyway. I was bust. I was supposed to go to uh, Morris High School, was the high school for my area, right? I'm, now I'm in the South Bronx, it's 141st Street where I live. I had to go all the way up to 190th Street to Theodore Roosevelt High School. So basically, I was bust when they had this old busting issue happen, but we're going to get right now. Let's keep on going. Um, but the way, when I say racism, because I really didn't, I know racism was there, but I really didn't expect it. When I got in the Air Force, one of the first things I was, I was when we was in Texas, there was this guy, said, can I touch your hair? What is weird kind of thing. I never had that experience growing up in the South Bronx. So I'm like 19 years old, and that's when I'm getting this weird you know, racism at another level, right? Um, uh, 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 my reaction was, what my reaction to this racism was to organize. While at McGuire, now my permanent beauty duty station was McGuire Air Force Base. I never went, I never got to Vietnam because, well, of course, a certain, well, I never got to Vietnam. I was at McGuire Air Force Base the whole time, um, my permanent duty station. I really open to raise some men's effects on earlier. While at McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey, I helped found and guide the Black Caucus. This is like 1971, 72, yeah. Uh, until the end of 71. An enlisted man's grievance and resolution organization. We did have female involvement. Okay, is, uh, that's with Black Horse, where we organized was for grievances and resolutions to problems in the United States Air Force. But, it was, but the Black Hawks was not because of McGuire Air Force Base. It was not only just the Air Force, but we had people from the Army. Army was next door. Fort Dix was next door. We had we had Marines. We had Navy, uh, even Navy SEALs, because um, the McGuire was a MAC command, a military airlift command. And I could tell any time where, where, how the war was going in Vietnam because we supplied the, the blood that went over there, you know, the, the transfusion blood. They all, they had, they went through McGuire Air Force Base. That's all I can tell you. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. This organization also produced two benefits for sickle cell anemia. I was a coordinator for both years. While at McGuire, I also did sickle cell testing in Brooklyn, for which the mayor of New York City awarded a citation. The mayor at that time was uh, John Lindsay. Actually, it was not just sickle cell, it was also lead poisoning from the eating of the paint. Or the After four years of the Air Force, I went back to college. My undergraduate studies included, uh, concluded with a Bachelor's of Arts degree from Livingston College Rutgers University in Journalism and, and Urban Communications that would be radio, video, television, print, uh, English, uh, with the, the, the concentration in English was um, film and black literature, uh, film studies and black literature. I studied two and a half years at the Mason Grove School of the Arts, that was part of Rutgers University, in the playwriting program, specifically theater, uh, theater and um, uh, spe uh, specifically, uh, playwriting specifically, but theater in general. Uh, I also had theater training, because remember when Negro Ensemble Company, did I mention that? Anyway, I, I don't think I mentioned that Negro Ensemble Company. Anyway, I was trained at Negro Ensemble Company from 67 to early. I was training Negro Ensemble Company. So when I went to the Air Force, I, I just wanted to get through there so I could get back to the theater, is basically what happened. Um, I did not take the Master of Fine Arts degree. Um, I had everything but dissertation. All I had to do was write a, a play, a full-life play. We were doing this all the time, and I did 
lucky for me because that got me into a audio drama. We won't get into that right now. I then came back to New York City and am now volunteering my time um, to the Cadet Corps teaching the theatrical and lighting training. Oh, I went back to the Cadet Corps. Oh. I also gained active, again, active with my fraternity pen school as it continues to serve the community, as I continue to serve the African community. Um, Anyways, I don't know why, I don't, I don't think that was really, really well, I guess I had some, I, I had some dealings with Penascope that I really um, was with, um, well, that's, I guess this is before BAI, this is right before 82, right, this is right before I came to WBAI. Uh, uh, and I says in close, current work towards African victory. Um, so I don't know, I think that current work towards African victory had to do with this thing with hate people and also at Bellevue Hospital. So I just wanted to share with you because I found these notes kind of interesting, written in 82, right, that's would be right before I got to BAI, that's interesting. So that's it for me, take from the Patterson, take the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect as a member, as a, uh, as, as someone in the lineage of ADOS, that would be the American descendants of chattel slavery, the North American descendants of chattel slavery.